I am now six weeks out from my full Ironman race, so it's time to start buckling down on my race nutrition. But what should that be? Watch on to find out. Hey, how's it going? I'm Will from Iron Will Multisport Australia, your place to find tips, tricks, and experience in triathlon, multisport, and endurance events and training. Nutrition is incredibly important. My coach won't stop telling me how important it is. When I did the Ironman 70.3 Western Sydney late last year, another member of my triathlon club was having some troubles with his nutrition during the run. I'm, I think he hadn't practiced with those specific gels, and so they weren't quite sitting very well in his stomach, and that severely affected his run time. This was great for me since I passed him and actually ended up a little bit faster than him overall through the race, even though he should have typically been a faster racer than I was. And this served as a warning for me to be very careful about my own nutrition, especially on race day. The old saying, don't do anything new on race day, is incredibly important, especially when it comes to nutrition. You wanna make sure that your body is comfortable with what you're taking in so that you can put out the best performance possible. A friend of mine, a YouTuber, did a video about this recently. I'll leave a link in the sidebar, whichever side that ends up on. Now, the nutrition that you need to take in does depend on the length of the race that you're doing. For me, I'm doing a full Ironman in six weeks, so this video is focusing on the nutrition that I am planning on taking in and that I am taking in for the full Ironman distance. But this can be useful for similar distances such as training for a full marathon or a long bike ride, that sort of thing. A lot of the information in this video comes from my coach. A lot of it also comes from my own research online and some of it is just from my own personal habit from races I've done in the past. Have you done or are you planning on doing an Ironman anytime in the future? Let us know in the comments below. Race day nutrition should start several weeks, if not months, before the race. You really need to spend the time getting used to the nutrition that you're gonna be using on and before race day, so that on race day, you know that you're comfortable with it and you can properly digest it while in a race scenario. One thing you can look at doing from a long term out from the race is intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting is useful for several reasons. One of the main ones for myself was when I started getting into triathlon last year, I weighed about 75 kilograms, which for my height, I should have been more around early 60s. So I did intermittent fasting for a few months and managed to cut about 10 kilograms off my body weight, cutting that fat, getting me a lot closer to my race weight. But aside from the fat loss and weight loss benefits of intermittent fasting, there is also benefits in allowing your body to get used to fat adaptation. See, when you're on a long run, you use the carbohydrate stores within your body. So your glycogen stores in your muscles, that's what fuels you throughout the race. But when you start running out of these, especially on say a marathon where you hit the wall, that's where your glycogen stores have run out and your body thinks, I'm out of fuel. Intermittent fasting is one way that you can train your body to be fat adapted and to be able to access energy through your fat stores in your body after your glycogen in your muscles has run out. If you want to be able to smash through that wall like the White Walker Dragon, sorry spoilers for anyone who hasn't seen the latest season, then being fat adapted will definitely help. It's not gonna allow you to achieve a personal best necessarily. It's not gonna make you the fastest, but it can help you last longer. But if you don't have time to do intermittent fasting or you just don't want to do intermittent fasting, then you can absolutely get through the race. You'll just have to take in carbohydrates throughout the race to make sure that you've got enough carbs and glycogen stores. For myself, I am aiming to get myself to a fat adapted state. So I will be doing intermittent fasting between now and the race, but on race day, I won't be aiming to have to use the fat adaptation. I will be taking in carbohydrates throughout the race and I'll go through my plan on that later on in this video. And I am hoping for some of those benefits of losing a couple of extra kilos as well. The more kilos that you lose, the closer you get to your race weight, the faster you can run and the faster you can bike. In the week before the race, this is where nutrition starts to get quite strict and you start to do specific things. One of the things which my coach absolutely recommends is two days out from the race, we need to start loading up the body with electrolytes and water. So two days out from the race, I'll have at least one liter 
of electrolyte water. One day out from the race, I'll have two liters of electrolyte water. And then the day of the race, a pre-race, I'll have three liters of electrolyte water to make sure that my body is completely hydrated. What I have found to be quite effective for the electrolyte water is to use electrolyte tablets. So tablets that you just find in a canister like this and you drop them into a bottle. So I've got either my cycling bottle or flexi bottle, which I use for the run. Brands for these don't typically matter that much. I use the Zero Extreme brand most commonly, but I've also used Noon and I've also used uh, Hammer Nutrition. They're all pretty good. The electrolyte tabs that also have caffeine with them are especially useful when you are intermittent fasting. That way you can do your morning exercise with the electrolyte tablets with some caffeine that'll stave off the hunger a little bit, it'll give you a little bit more energy so that you can get through your exercise and burn off that little bit more fat. As I mentioned, having three liters of electrolyte water pre-race may seem like a lot, but it can be especially helpful if, say, it's a very hot day or you're a heavy sweater or you're a very salty sweater, like me. <laughs> Another thing I will do in the day or couple leading up to the race is carb loading. Now this is not eating a gigantic bowl of pasta. This is just increasing the amount of carbohydrates that you have in a couple of days leading up to the race so that you have plenty of glycogen stores within your muscles that you can use on race day so that you have plenty of energy to use straight away in the race. And this is especially useful in the full Ironman where you've got a really long swim to start with where you're not likely to be taking in any nutrition. A lot of pros typically use pasta or rice and some protein or even pizza the day before a race. You wanna have something which you're comfortable with, something that you can relax with, something that you enjoy so that you can calm yourself down a little bit. And you do want to, in the couple of days leading up to the race, increase the amount of calories you're taking in, especially the amount of nutrients and good stuff you're taking in. This is so that you have plenty of energy on race day, but you don't want to take in so much that you'll have digestion issues on race day because that will slow you down. And then finally you get to race morning, so the day of the race itself. Now the nutrition that you take in on race morning will depend on when the race is actually happening. Most recently I did the Triathlon Australia New South Wales Club Championships and my race wasn't until 12.30pm, so early afternoon. That was kind of weird, and that meant that I could get a little bit of breakfast in. But typically, most races happen really early in the morning, starting like 6.30, 7.30 a.m., that sort of thing. In which case, you don't want to have too much sitting in your stomach. That will weigh you down throughout your race. Most race mornings, where I'm doing this sort of thing really early, I will have something liquid, like an up-and-go, which is like a protein shake. I will also maybe have a muesli bar, or an energy bar. And it's very useful to practice this pre-race nutrition on some of your longer rides or your longer runs to make sure that you know that your stomach can handle it. Or maybe even do some smaller races and practice this new race nutrition for those races so that you know you can handle it on the race day as well when all of that adrenaline is kicking in. It is a little bit of a different scenario. So you're at the race, you've checked in, you've put your bike in transition, you're all ready to go. You're going now to the swim start area. What I will do before the swim is have one energy gel just, just before the swim, maybe tuck it into my wetsuit or something like that so that I have just that little bit of burst of energy pre-race. I've used loads of different gels over the years. Some of my favorites are the Wiggle gels, they're pretty good. The winner's gels, I think, are the ones which are used in Ironman, so the ones that are handed out. So worthwhile to practice with what you're going to be using on race day. I've also used the Goo gels, the GU energy gels, they're quite nice. And also recently I've been using hammer gels, so the ones which you pour into your own little flask. You can weigh it out how liquidy you want it or how gooey you want it, and you just... Yeah, it also works out quite a bit cheaper going the larger jugs of energy gel and diluting it into these. So after you've taken your energy gel, I'll then get in the water and the swim will happen. Now for the swim, no nutrition at all. You don't want to be stopping during the swim. And you finish the swim, enter into transition zone one. As you rip off your wetsuit, 
The next thing I will do is I will have one of my energy gel bottles and I will have a bottle of electrolyte water. Take a swig, take a swig, and off I go. You don't want to hang around too long in transition one, or transition two for that matter. These are some of the easiest times where you can make up time in the race overall. So make them as quick as you can. So then you're off onto the bike leg. Now the bike leg, I've got a very specific plan for my nutrition. Every 20 minutes, I will make sure that I have an energy gel or one serving of energy gel if I'm using the bottles. Also, every hour that I'm on the bike, I want to consume at least one liter of electrolyte water. And every half an hour or so, I'll have a bite of an energy bar. Finally, also once every hour, I will have a salt tablet. As I mentioned before, I'm a bit of a salty sweater, so I need to take in lots of salts. Now, if you don't want to carry too much on your bike, you can take nutrition from the volunteers along the race. Although, my preference is to make sure that I carry my own nutrition. That way I know exactly what's going in my body, I know exactly what my body can take. And also, I don't have to worry about slowing down too much to try and catch things off volunteers, which I may drop and then not have nutrition after that. The, what I will do is I will take from the volunteers the bottles of water. So as you go through the aid stations, I'll grab a bottle of water, quickly fill up, and I will fill up that water with electrolyte tablets. So you finish the bike, hopefully you're still feeling pretty good. Now transition two. This is gonna be very similar to transition one, so I'll take a swig of my gels, take a swig of electrolyte water, and try and get out on the run as fast as I can. On the run, I will use a race belt that has pockets attached to it. So most recently I started using this one from Naked. It's really good, so it's got a race number attachments at the front, and then there's three pockets which are held tight against the body, but you can just pull on the little tag, open it up, and grab whatever nutrition you need out of those pockets. The pockets are also very useful, especially while training, to carry my flexible water bottle. So the nutrition for my run is similar to the nutrition for the bike, with a couple of slight differences. Once again, every 20 minutes, I'll be taking in some sort of uh, energy gel, whether that's a serving of or one of the little packets. Also, once an hour, I wanna be taking in one of the salt tablets. Although in the run, I won't be taking in energy bars. I'll just leave it to the gels for the run. Something light, something which won't sit in my stomach. Also, on the run, unlike on the bike, you can't necessarily carry that much liquid. On the bike, I've got a bottle which sits between my aero bars and I can have quite a bit of liquid in there and a couple of bottles in the bottle cages. But on the run, I've got my little 500ml bottle, but I actually prefer not to carry that with me on race day. So what I will do instead is utilize each of the rest stations. Now at the rest or aid stations, they will have typically cups and the cups will have either water, electrolyte water, uh, cola sometimes, and sometimes Red Bull or some sort of energy drink. Going through the aid stations since they're handing out the drinks in cups, I will typically try and grab the cup from the top, try and pinch it so that you reduce the amount of open space at the top. That stops it sloshing around, stops you losing the liquid before you can get it to your mouth, and also stops it from getting all over your face when you go and take a drink from it. At each of these aid stations, I will try and get a little bit of electrolyte water, get that down. I'll try and get some, sometimes they've got cups of icy water and actual ice. That's great. The water I'll try and tip over my head, the ice I'll throw down the top of my triathlon suit, kind of wiggle it around so that cools me down. I'll, if they've got some cola and I feel like it, I'll have a, some of that. Or if they've got some energy drink and I feel like that at the time, I'll have some of that. They can add just that little bit of extra sugar, that little bit of extra caffeine that will help power you through the run. By this point, if you have been taking in enough nutrition that you have practiced with, then you will be able to finish the race nice and strong. And then it is post-race nutrition, which means eat whatever you want within reasonable limits. I think a beer is a mandatory thing. For the Ironman at the finishers area, there will be a lot of nutrition. So there'll be electrolyte liquid, there'll be energy drinks, there'll be, there was ice cream at the Western Sydney, 70.3 Western Sydney. I had a few of those. You've expended a lot of energy that day. So you deserve to have a lot of energy coming in at the end of the race. 
Just of course, don't overdo it and make sure that you hydrate. And so between now and my full Ironman in six weeks, I will be practicing most of this on and off throughout my training. And I will be doing the intermittent fasting, trying to get my weight down, trying to get myself fat adapted so that on race day, I can perform at the best possible level that I can get to. What's your race day nutrition like? Let us know in the comments section down below. For more info on how race day affects you slightly differently, I'll leave a link up here. If you want triathlon content every week from here in Australia and New Zealand, then hit that like and subscribe button and I will see you in the next one. Cheerio.